Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. This is David Ward and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to have your walk cycle actually move your character along a distance rather than staying one in one place like he's on a treadmill or a slippery surface of some sort. So um, first thing I want to do, you know, let's look at our, our model here. It's the old Cycloptigalian that we've had for a couple of years now. Um, Got a nice walk cycle set up. I think this is probably from that particular tutorial that I showed you on the walk cycle. So have that all set up and looped here in the NLA editor. So he's all set. He's ready to go. Now, uh, the first there's a couple of way, a couple of different ways to do the distance on a walk cycle, um, and that really applies to any action. You don't necessarily have to have a walk cycle run, you know, or you could just be bouncing along like a bouncing ball. You want it to you know, bounce across the floor or something like that. Um, but the first way is the simplest way from point A to point B, just a straight line. Um, I'll show you how to do that first. Let's grab our a piece of our, our uh, rig here, armature, and let's go to object mode. And what we're going to do is animate the actual, the whole model itself rather than each individual bone. So it's not going to be an action per se. Um, as far as the rig goes, it's, it's just going to be an animation of the entire rig itself as an object. So, what we want to do is go to side view and let's go ahead and turn on our automatic keyframe insertion and just drag our guy on the Y axis back a little ways. Let's say about eh, maybe a little further and zoom out. Move. There we go. And then we'll go up to the final frame, which is 250. There we go. And drag him all the way up here. So now, so we inserted the keyframe, automatic keyframes. You can see if we rewind, gonna get a nice angle. We can actually see some movement there. He's starting to walk, and then he's moving at a distance, like so. And that works okay. However, you can see it took a while to get going. So what we need to do is jump into our graph editor and come all the way up here till we can see the handlebars of the Bezier curve there. And want to change the key uh, interpolation mode to linear and that'll straighten that line out. So now if we go into rewind, let's make this window a little bigger so you can see. There we go. And we hit play, you can see he starts walking like, like so. So that works pretty well if you're just gonna you know animate your guy just walking across the across the floor, across the ground, whatever. You know you can kinda if if it looks like his feet are slipping and sliding a little bit, as you can see, he's not really getting the traction that he looks like he should. You can adjust your distances. If we go to side view, say if it looks like, well, <laughs> let me get him on screen. If it looks like his feet are slipping, he's probably moving a little too slow for his his feet motion. So um, we'll just need to shorten the distance between the two points. So just get there on that first keyframe just moving up move them up a little bit and then go to the last one and maybe move them back a little bit so now when we rewind and play that looks a little better you can also mess with the uh, the rate of repetition here on your linear R uh, and your NLA editor where's that at there we go so grab that clip and the scale of the repetition is what you would change. Get that a little bigger. So we want his footsteps to be a little, a little slower. So let's set that up a little bit. So it's going to be a larger scale. So let's try 1.5. See how that one looks. And it looks a little better, but you know you can you can sit there and maybe it's a little too much. That looks pretty decent, I guess. But you can sit there and play with it until it looks uh, satisfactory to you. Um, okay, so that's that's the first way to, to uh, get the actual illusion of motion there. Actually, I guess it is motion, not just necessarily an illusion. But um, the other way is with a path constraint. And I'll show you that real quick. Let's go ahead and get rid of our keyframes there. Go all the way back here to that first frame one and alt i will delete the keyframes go ahead and fast forward to the end alt i again okay and let's go ahead and turn off the automatic keyframe insertion now and it's alt g to get him centered right back up to where he was okay now we'll go into a top view shift 
Shift A, and add a curve, and we're going to add a path. Now you can't really see it too easy, but uh, if you tab into edit mode and zoom in there, you can kind of see sort of a uh, almost like a, a centipede type of looking thing. But those are arrows, those are pointing the direction that the curve is going to go. So that means we need this point here to be at the origin of his walk cycle. So we'll go ahead and put that right there where he's at, centered right there underneath him. And then we'll grab these other points and just kind of move them around here. So he will walk and follow this path. So he's going to walk around a corner and maybe a little bit, a little uphill. Okay. So he'll walk along that path and then go uphill. Now, tab back out. And quick, easy way, grab your model. Again, make sure he's in object mode. And shift select that new path and control P. And I'm going to follow path. So now, even though he doesn't have any keyframes, he knows that he needs to follow that path. So you can have your, set your path to kind of correspond with any general landscaping that you have on your environment. Like if you have hills and valleys and things like that, you can adjust your, uh, your, your path here to follow along with those hills and valleys around any corners. If he's walking down the street and wants to walk around a building or, building or something like that, you can have him do that as well. So that's pretty much it piece of cake it's a lot easier than you might think if you're if you're trying to figure it out it's like oh well that was easy so anyways um, okay well that's gonna be it for this tutorial hopefully you enjoyed it and and learned a thing or two so thanks for watching again this is David Ward and I'll catch you next time real quick one thing I forgot to mention um, when you apply your your model to your path and you start out like, oh, it looks good, looks good. And then you get, whoops, uh-oh. He reached the end of the path and he's, hmm, maybe it should take him longer to get there. I don't know, maybe you've made your path a lot bigger or something like that. But in any case, in any case, um, if you want it to, to take longer to get to the end of the path, uh, the default is set to 100. So let's go ahead and set it up to 250, which is the length of our our animation here so let's set 250 there and now you, you can see he's taking slower strides and it takes him actually 200, 250 frames to actually get to the end so that might be and it looks like that's about the right speed for his footsteps as well they seem to actually walk along a surface instead of sliding on it See what happens when you run that down some. Now see if you you can well again like like when we played with the point A to point B, um, you just mess with uh, the frames here to get it to match up to his footsteps a little bit better. So um, so there you go. Set that to 250, and boom. So or say you want it to do really fast, 30 frames. Boom. So just whatever looks good to you. And that's how you do that. So, okay, like I said, just real quick, wanted to throw that in there because I forgot to mention it in the original recording. So, again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.